Manitowish Waters Historical Society presents Robert Cassine Interview 1, September 14, 2017. Robert Cassine is the grandson of Robert Loveless. He is the son of Ella Loveless Cassine. In this interview, he tells his recollection of his grandfather and the Virgin Forest Park. He also describes the store and the tavern that were built off the lake. The store was moved to the rerouted Highway 51, and the tavern was built on the present site. He grew up on the farm at the end of Cassine Drive, where his family grew corn, hay, and potatoes. He has fond memories of Robert Loveless as a very hard worker and a trickster. We hope you enjoy this interview. Thank you. Today is uh, Thursday, September 14th, 2017. Mm -hmm. And Jody Miller and myself, Janelle Cole, are here interviewing. I'll let you introduce yourselves. Bob Cassine. And could you spell your last name? K-A-S-S-I-E-N. Just leave the O off for casino. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Bob's okay. wife. And I'm Bob's wife, Darlene. My maiden name was Engstrom, E-N-G-S-T-R-O-M. And my last name is Cassine. Okay. And when were you married? May 19th, 1956. Nice. We have been married 61 years. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 61 years. Okay. And um, next I'll ask a little about your family trees. Bob, you are probably the best known for, uh, as far as the family goes, for being the grandson of Robert Loveless. Yes, uh, Grandpa Loveless was my grandfather. He was named after him also. Yeah. My name Robert. is Robert also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Robert Loveless is known to be one of the first settlers here in the North Woods back in the 18... Uh, he, 91, I believe? Yes, he came in this area. He was born in uh, July 4th, 1872, okay. in uh, Balsam, Wisconsin, which, uh, which is in the northwestern part of the state. Hmm. Okay. And, I, and he left, actually left home when he was probably around 14 or 15. And uh, at one time, he went to the county fair, which was in Balsam. I, I think that's the town it was in anyway. And he was there and he saw an Indian walk a tightrope. That was probably about 10, 12 feet high. And Grandpa says, I thought, if an Indian can do it, I can do it. So. He went home and he stretched a rope between two trees to see if he could walk on it. But of course the rope was only like a foot high. And he learned to walk on it and then he raised it up a couple more feet. And he kept doing that until he had it up 10, 12 feet high. And he could take a pole, and a, a balance pole, and walk across it. <clears throat> and he also, when he had the pavilion here on Alder Lake, he had a rope on it and he walked across it at that time. People would come and they would see him and they sort of a little thing that he used to do and and all he used to run around sometimes he put a bear rug on his over top of him and uh, make out like he was some animal and he'd run across on all fours on the dance floor and scare oh. the people. And <laughs> one day that actually he actually did that but some of the one of the fellows had a pistol. And he was about ready to shoot, and someone hollered out, "No, no, don't shoot! That's Grant, that's Bob Loveless. Don't, don't <laughs> shoot." <laughs> but after that happened, he never did that again with a bear rug. <laughs> yeah, you might tell him was, the story about uh, coming home with the money that he made. Yeah, he actually uh, from walking that, the tightrope. When he when he walked that tightrope that that the following year when he went the the, the fair. And uh, 
he said that he could walk the tightrope. Well, the gentleman that was taking care of the fair said, hey, make room for this little boy. He's going to walk the tightrope. So everybody got a rope and in the balance pole, and he climbed the ladder, and he walked across it. So they all clapped, and they were excited about it. And, of course, in those days, there wasn't a whole lot of money, so one of the fellows passed a hat around, and Grandpa ended up with $11 and a few cents. And mm -hmm. uh, so on his way home, he bought a pair of pants. And I, I don't know whether they're jeans or not, but anyway, he had those, and he was excited about it making that kind of money and what he had done, and he told his mother about it. Well, his mother got excited and said, no, no, you don't keep that money. You bring that money home and give it to me. I, and he, she actually bawled him out for stopping and buying a pair of pants. <laughs> well, he didn't like that too well. And so after a few days, he decided that I'm not going to stay here anymore. So he left. Mm -hmm. He packed his little, what he called his turkey, and the way he went, and he he rode the train entirely. He got to Rhinelander, and then he got on the Northwestern, and he ended up coming to Woodruff, which at that town was a logging town. There was a, a pile of logs that they had decked near the, uh, what's the name of that uh, park? Uh, Right there, and as you come into as you come into Manaqua, uh, Torpy Park. Torpy oh, Park. Yeah. Okay. There was a pile of logs there. That was a deck mm -hmm. at that time, and just on the other side of the where the railroad went through, just on the other side of the depot, was a sawmill, and they were busy sawing logs and sawing lumber. And when he came there, he, and then he he went to Trout Lake and set up a camp there for himself. And uh, he was a great fisherman, so he would fish, and then he would sell the fish to the camp, the logging camp people. Well, then that's how he made his money. And then he he would trap beaver and different animals and sell the furs, and and uh, so he did that for a number of years. And uh, mother tells in here at one time he. He made a, he had a thousand dollars that he'd earned, and that that's why he could homestead some land on Alder Lake, and mm -hmm. uh, that's what started it. And then from then on, and he in, increased his holdings by buying more land around the area from the loggers, because the loggers at that time didn't want the land after the trees were cut, because they were they didn't want to pay the tax, so. You could buy a, a 40 acres of land for approximately a dollar an acre, or else, or else just pay the back taxes what was owed. And he, he did that. And I don't really remember how many 40s he actually owned, but he owned quite a few. And then, then periodically through the years, he'd find a good buyer and he'd sell one or sell two or whatever it was. Then he, uh, he cut land, he cut some of the, he had the logging uh, sawmill there at the entrance of the river where it leaves Alder Lake on the right hand side. It was called the Mill Pond. In fact, there's a, the, uh, I think Tom Barry who owns that mm -hmm. property now, I think he calls that the Mill, he, Tom, Mill, Mill Pond. Mill Pond Resort. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, that's, that was originally Grandpa's uh, resort. He, I think he had uh, seven cottages that he built at that time. And uh, of course, Tom Bear now has taken and remodeled those cottages. He so, tore it down, actually, yeah, built all new. Tore it down and made new mm -hmm. new uh, cottages. They're very nice, they're very they look large. Like little, they look like homes, really. Mm -hmm. but large. Anyway. Do you know what a, how old your uncle or your grandpa might have been while he was the landowner with Alder Lake? With well, let's see. Um, he was um, did probably he, in his thirties. Did he homestead this before he married your grandma? Well, he. I don't know actually if he was the owner of the, of the property at that time, but I think he was because he tells about it in here where he, uh, 
made friends with the Indians, and uh, that was in the earlier days before he mm -hmm. had the property. So I think he probably got that property in the, in the late, the night, around 1910, 19, because mm -hmm. I think right they were married. Right after the logging. I right. think they were married in 02 or 04. It's a really a good story yeah. also how he met your grandmother. Yes, that would be yeah. really nice to hear. <laughs> well, he was in Alder, he was in Trout Lake and he'd been fishing and he, he went to the, uh, there was an island on the large part of Trout Lake and there was a resort there and she was working at the resort and uh, at the time and he met her there and uh, then later on they started going together and uh, her name was Halda. Halda Swain. 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 And uh, Halda. How mm -hmm. do you spell Halda? H, H U L D A. D A. And her um, her last name? S W A. I M. Is it? Uh, she went through this right at the, at the beginning here. I, <laughs> I, I can tell pretty well what it is. Uh, I think it's. Uh, Now she tells it in here. It's okay. Do you know? Why don't um, we just leave it at that? And if we yeah. have to correct it, it, it we it's can. It's W A I M. I think mm -hmm. that's what it was. But anyway, yeah. Um, he met her and um, wanted to know if they could live together for a year <laughs> to find out if they really could get along. Hmm. Right. And she came. <laughs> From a family uh, that uh, she had a brother and two sisters, and you're, so right. the, actually with Halda, it was three sisters three and one brother. So there was four children in the family, and I thought it was interesting that um, Bob asked her if she would live with him for this year, and she thought, "I'll have to think it over." Well, anyway. She went to see her mother and dad, and she talked to them about that. And they said, if you're going to do that, we will have nothing ever just, to do with you again. Yeah, we'll, we'll disown you. We'll disown you. So anyway, she Wait. went back <laughs> from where she, uh, the Swames lived. They were down, but they, at the time she took a logging train, and I know he because there wasn't any passenger train as such. Everybody was, uh, rode the logging trains, they called them, so. And it was in the southern part of the state. And I don't know exactly, but was, I heard it was like towards Appleton in that direction. Okay. Is where they lived. So she went mother, back. And she went there and then, yeah. and then her mother said that, if you do that, I'm gonna disown you. You won't be a, a daughter of mine. And, uh, of course, that was sort of unheard of in those right. days. Definitely. But uh, that was what they decided to do. But he was, he was altogether different from most people anyway. Yeah. How I did mean, they meet? They he was fishing on Alder Lake, on or Trout, Trout Lake. Lake. Yeah. And she worked it on was, the island. Oh, she was working there. Working. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And okay. so that's how he met her. And yeah. he decided that he wanted to marry her, but... Not you know, not Wanted for this one sure. year. Yeah. Wanted to make sure he was going to Yeah, he said we'll we'll live together for one year, and if we get along fine, we'll get married. Well, she thought that would be all right, but her mother didn't think that. Would no. be so they did. So and they lived the one year, and everything was fine, and then they got married. Yeah. Oh, they she did it anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, after the one year. Yeah. Uh, and did the mother? Never. They, she disowned her, and that and was she it. she stuck and to it. Oh. If you'd asked her at the time how many daughters she had, she said she had two. Oh. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. wouldn't. She would never admit she had. That's terrible. She oh. Had oh. All the, oh. I mean, yes. in today's <laughs> thought, that wouldn't even come to who, who didn't ever pay attention to it. You yeah. know, the no way, way people <laughs> talk today. <so>. Times have <laughs> changed. Times have changed. Oh. Uh, if that was the case, there'd be a lot of people who'd be disowned. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I mean it. It was just a, a thing that happened to in her life, and uh, and he made the best of it. But uh, he was always a joker too. He'd always have some little story to tell, and very interesting. Grandpa was. Bob, tell about um, when they had the uh, the big dance hall. Um, about the bands that came in. Well, uh, the, the dance hall was built and started in approximately 1922. And who built it? Uh, he he actually had uh, uh, the contractor out of Manitowish. It was name was Hanson Palmer Hanson mm -hmm. at the time. He was a. You probably was, know of Palmer. Yeah, oh he yeah. He did a lot He's, of building yes. in the area. My dad knew him. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. the, he. He actually built the dance hall, and uh, mm -hmm. of course, Grandpa cut the lumber for it in his lumber mill, and uh, and he also built the cabins. And one of the, the the house that they had a house right nearby too, but that caught fire and burned in uh, probably in nineteen. Oh, I think nineteen twenty nine. Because I was born in 1930, and this would happen just as shortly before I was born. And what caused so the fire? They, uh, the bricks got loose, or the, the bricks of the mortar was loose in the chimney, and somehow the fire was sort of hot because of creosote that had gathered in the chimney, and it burned it out, and as in the process of burning it, Cause the bricks to get too hot and start fire in the, yeah. in the chimney. And uh, at the time, there was some, probably about six or seven fellas that were working in the mill, at the sawmill, and Grandma came running out of the house and all it said, the house is on fire. So they left the mill and came up there and they tried to put the fire out, but they didn't, couldn't do it. And it, the house actually burned. It was a, it was a fairly nice house, quite large house, and it was right near uh, Alder, uh, right near the water in Alder Lake, and it was almost at the end of of uh, Loveless Road as it goes across and straight down to the lake, mm -hmm. and uh, the cabins were on the right hand side, and the houses on the left hand side of this road that went down. Of course, that road is. Now it's all been bought up, so the property it doesn't. There is no road there. It's just a, a line between two different properties. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, that's. Uh, so then they moved into one of the house, one of the cabins. The first cabin on the left, when they come down the road, that that was or on the right, I should say, first cabin on the right. That grandpa insulated that because they weren't all insulated. They were summer cow cabins because when it got cold here, most people didn't come up. There wasn't any skiing or snowmobiling or anything of that nature at that time, you know. So people, there, there wasn't that many tourists around, just local people lived here. So uh, there was a lot of cabins around that wasn't really uh, made for winter. And uh, actually, that they stayed there then until they got the the building that they built at the corner of, of Loveless Lane in Fifty One. Then that and was, that was on that was the old Fifty One, right, Bob? Right, it's the old Fifty, not not and, the new Fifty One, old Fifty One. Yeah. And right where it crossed, and he built there, and then. He also put some what they call auto court in. He had six ca little cabins that they put in. Uh, that was uh, by uh, 51. And he would rent these cottages. It's right across from the Howling Dog, as it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it and was, there's one cabin left there yet. And somebody one, yeah. has covered it, yeah, but it was made out of logs. Yeah, you can see one of those mm -hmm. cabins still uh, is still here. It's across the, the Loveless Road from the Howling Dog. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the woods there. That's oh, what I'll he actually look for that. had. I never noticed yeah. that. Yeah, it's a small cabin, and yeah. behind it is a mobile home. 
park there. Mm -hmm. And what he did uh, at the time, uh, he had a light plant for power because uh, there wasn't any power up here at that time. Everybody that had power, like Walsh's had power and Kerner's had power. Kerner's was a resort on the other side of the, of the bridge, on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. as you cross the bridge. It was almost directly across from that restaurant. Uh, what's the name of the? Blue, Blue Bayou. Bayou. The Blue Bayou, yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost directly across from there. There was a resort in there called Kerner's Resort mm -hmm. years ago. It was very pretty from what yeah. I remember. <gasps> and mm -hmm. uh, people from there and and uh, bosses had come over to Grandpa. They were usually a lot of the clientele that came to, the, came to that store. And then he, uh, well then later on when they moved the highway, he had the property between uh, New 51 and Old 51. So he just moved everything up here to where it is now So today. all of the cabins that are adjacent right next door My, to the Howling Dog, mm -hmm. his grandpa built all of those. Mm -hmm. No, those, well, the, 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 the end one was a store. Yeah, the end one next to the next to the the uh, town line road. Mm -hmm. That was a little larger. That was the, the store that was oh. over on the corner of uh, Lotus Lane old and 51. Old Fifty One. And he oh, moved it. Okay. And they actually lived in there. They moved from that cottage that they. After the house burned down, they moved from the cottage into that, into store. that store, and they lived in the back end of it. And they, they had the front end open for candy bars and tobacco products and gloves and a few things like that. They sold out of the store. Was it the only store you think in the area at about nineteen? Did they? It it might have been. Did they have staples like no, sugar well, or flour? No, oh. that. You don't mother, remember. mother actually. Well, they had a wash machine because they would take the the sheets and pillowcases that they took from the cottages. They take them over to that store and wash them because that's where they had the wash machine. Now she never mentioned that they had other things in there except you know a few things like yeah, mm -hmm. you know like, like candy bars or uh -huh. or something. But they might have had more in there, but. They didn't have dinner mentioned it, and I was too little at the time. I remember being at that store, yeah. And he had a right across Loveless Lane. There was a uh, he had built a garage, mm -hmm. and there was a sign in the back of that garage, and it was leaning up against the the wall of the garage. And I remember going there under that sign. I was just a little boy. I crawled under the sign and I found an old coat and I pulled it in there and I laid it underneath on the ground. Of course the sign was laying on an angle so I had room between the, the building and the bottom of the sign and I thought that was a nice place to make a house. I mean in my mind I was building a house. <laughs> well my mother wanted to know where I was and she came out of the out of the store area where they lived, she'd been washing clothes, and of course they had to hang, they had the clotheslines and everything out, so they hang all the sheets and everything on the clothesline. She was looking around for me, and she found me under that sign, and I remember distinctly she was hollering at me, "That sign's going to fall down and hit you." It was a sign that was made out of sheet metal, probably a four foot by six foot or something like that. But it was, uh, well, it was, I don't think it would have fell down. It was there for a long time, but, you know, <laughs> that's how I thought anyway. So she pulled me out of there, and anyway, I remember that playing around that, that back of that garage when I was a little boy. Oh, Bobby, you might tell yeah. him about how he met Southgate. Well, Southgate, at one time, after Grandpa was up here, he made a trip to Chicago, and he uh, met Southgate. And he actually was working for Southgate. His name was Richard Southgate. And uh, my mother's middle name was Southgate. She, they, 
they sort of named her after uh, Southgate. And he was the uh, owner of the Congress Hotel. And Chicago, Opera House. And Opera House in Chicago. In Chicago. And uh, he was great friends of another man named Marvin Hewitt. And they were, they traveled together and they played golf together and things. And they were, and they, and uh, when Grandpa was up here, then Southgate asked him to uh, go up, come up here and build a place for his clientele to come to because they wanted to uh, have some place to go fishing and hunting and so on. So he built a, a log cabin over on Little Trout, which is right near the Cranberry Marsh right now, where the Cranberry Beds are. And uh, that that was about, uh, I can't remember the year that was done, but it was, uh, it wasn't mentioned in here, but uh, I'd say that was a, probably in uh, like 1910, 1908, somewhere along in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he, uh, of course, Southgate had a uh, a launch, they called it, like a large boat. And he wanted to go on the, on the chain of lakes, Matt Twist chain, because, but he couldn't get through with his boat. So they built a canal all the way from Little Trout all the way through to to uh, Alder Lake, but he had was, Bob Lovell, which is almost take two miles care of long. All of this, yeah. Oh. So Grandpa was like he, the engineer for that. Mm -hmm. He hired people from Flambeau and Hurley, and oh, there was a, quite a crew of people that he hired to help dig that out with with uh, trenches. They didn't have a you know a regular uh, backhoe and all. <laughs> they, they did it with shovels and. Can you tell me? Uh, about the mileage, it was, uh, how, uh, it was a, it was right around two miles through there, mm -hmm. oh. and right, that was all yeah. hand dug. All hand dug, oh. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, then there was the water was higher in Little Trout than Alder, so they had to put a uh, dock in so that they would keep the water back, a gate, mm -hmm. and uh, so they did that, and I remember at one time. They, it, of course, it wasn't used at the time when I was there, because my dad and my my uh, mother was with me, and I was walking on the wood where it went across the end of the end of the water, end of the canal. And Dad says, "Be very careful, don't fall in." I remember him telling me that, and I I, I walked across. It was. Well, I would say approximately 12, 12 feet wide, because it was wide enough for that boat to go through. And uh, it went. He had that boat. And there's some pictures of that in that uh, boat of that boat that I have here. Now, where did he, where did he get that launch? Did he have that made? He might have. I don't know where it came from originally, but I would say it came from some boat company and near Milwaukee or Chicago area, I would think. You have a picture of the boat in there? Yeah, there is a picture I can of the just boat. show it on the camera here. It might be in this one too. I look inside of there and see if there's anything else. No, it's, a, yeah, it's in there. Yeah, there's a picture of the launch. Maybe we can no, put it. That, no, maybe it's better yeah. like this. Okay, and this is the boat that would go through the canal? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what wow. year was this? Uh, that was probably, that picture was probably taken in about 22 or 24. I would think. Okay. Oh, here your mother wrote um, that the canal was actually three miles long from Little Trout to Lake, Alder to Lake. Trout Lake, oh, to Alder Lake. 
for the launch to go through. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Was this boat specifically built to make it through the the yeah. canal? And also in the boat in that picture is Bob Loveless and his older daughter Leona. Leona. So that would have been your sister. No, aunt. That would be aunt. my aunt. It was. It was oh, his Bob. Okay. Uh, his mother's yes. sister. My mother's sister. Yes. Yes. Great. She she died during childbirth. They claim. Yes. So she didn't live long. Leona yeah. didn't. No. No. Yeah. She looks like a very young girl here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was taken in. Uh, does she have a date on it? I think maybe that not. Twenty. No, she doesn't have a date. Hmm. But she does have the canal. Was, I thought it was three miles 26 long. or 28 that was taken, but maybe not. So. 1926 or 1928, yeah. perhaps? Yeah. Okay. But That's isn't that very interesting? interesting. Yeah. Wow. And you mentioned earlier that, um, did you say your mother or your grandmother's middle name was Southgate? His mother's, mother. Mother's, my mother's middle name is Southgate. So Ella, she was. Um, Ella Southgate Loveless. So she was. She was named. Richard Lovelace's. Richard Southgate's Love. daughter? No, Bob Loveless's daughter. But he just named her after. Her in, middle name. In right. honor of his friend. Right. That's oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So her name was Ella Southgate. Okay. Yeah. Loveless. Yeah, mother passed away. Uh, in 2010. She How was old was she? 98. <laughs> My goodness. Longevity. Wow. Yes, that's great. <laughs> I told Bob he has hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Bob, I, I didn't ask you how many siblings do you have? Uh, we had, uh, well, I was the oldest, and then Melvin was the next. He's three years younger than I am. Mm -hmm. He was born in 33. And uh, then I have a sister that was born in 40. Uh, Jeanette was born in 40. What about Gary, the youngest? What? I think she was born in 42, and Gary was born in 47. I know Gary. Yeah. We went to school together, yep. You and Gary went to school mm -hmm. together? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, Lakeland. Is that right? He was just here. I haven't seen him in 53 years. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> He's, he's one of these that's into exercising now. Yeah. And so he's very thin. Yeah. Yeah. He's very nice looking. Yeah. Always was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what is your sister's name? Jeanette. She passed away. In, and uh, she is she, deceased. She, she, mm -hmm. she died in seven, in, when she was 71. Yeah. She, about three years ago. Three, about three years ago. Yeah. Mm hmm. Melvin passed away right about after two years before my mother did. Yeah. He was, they were both in uh, Friendly Village Home in Rhinelander. So it's Bob and his brother Gary that are now left. Mm -hmm. The two of them. That's quite an age span. Yeah. You were 1930 and he <laughs> I, was 1940. I actually. My dad liked to go to the movies. My mother, they, they drive all the way to Ironwood to the Range Theater and early mm -hmm. just to see a cowboy movie or something, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness! But uh, we, uh, we go to the movies in uh, called I think it was called uh, I keep saying the Violet Theater, but I don't remember if that's exactly the name of it or not. It was in Manapa. Oh, Lakeland Cinema. Was it? Lakeland it, Cinema, I think. It was at Lakeland. It might have been theater, but it's the only theater. It wasn't mm -hmm. any in Woodruff at the time, mm -hmm. just in Manaqua. So the, the show would come on, so I would stay in, in, in town after school when I went to high school. And then a friend of mine, a buddy of mine, would lend me his bicycle and I'd ride around town or just visit with them and would do whatever I wanted to do and then when time to go to the school or go to the show I'd walk from Woodruff to Manaqua 
then I go to the show, and then Dad would come after the show and pick me up, go home. Oh. But well, anyway, Bob would babysit. And then the next for night, his mother and dad. The, the next night, then they would go to the show, mm -hmm. and I'd take care of my brother and sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they were the oh. babies at the time. Yep. Well, where did you? So you went to school or high school then in in Minocqua, But where did you? Where did you go to grade school when you were ready for Boulder, school? Boulder Junction. You went to a Boulder Junk. Do you remember what the name of the school was since just there were Boulder several Junction one school? It was just called a Boulder Junction Grade School. Oh, okay. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you, you lived on in where you lived on Alador Lake? Or where was where No, we had a farm at the end of Island Lake Road off of Highway 51. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. so that was Boulder Junction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, you, if you followed the old 51 mm -hmm. that goes past uh, the, the grocery store, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what's her name? I, mean, I always get her name. Teresa? Teresa, yeah. Go past From the Rustic? The Rustic. Goes behind yes. the store. Go behind mm -hmm. the Rustic. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just follow that road straight down. That was, that was the highway from Monopoly to Ironwood. That was the old 51? That was the old 51. Mm -hmm. And then, oh. then you come to the corner, the next corner, and you turn to the right. If you turn to the left, you went to LaFay's Resort, which was on Island Lake. If you went right straight ahead, and it went about, about a half a mile, that was where our little farm was down there. That's okay. where we lived. So one side was Boulder Junction, and the other side is is Manitowish Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So your your um your your folks had the where the howling dog howling dog is. Oh, that's where Grandpa had. Your that. Grandpa. Yeah. Your yeah. Grandpa had that. Yeah. Right. And then. Um, and then uh, we uh, we had the little farm down on that oh, on that okay. section. I remember a lot of times Mother would say, "Of course, there wasn't any TV in those days," and so. In the evening, she'd say, "Well, let's go over to Mother's." So then they drive over. I always liked that because I'd sit at the Howling Dog, and of course, it was called at that time Virgin Force Tavern. It wasn't called the Howling Dog. That was. He had a sign. I thought I had a picture of that. I I remember seeing one, but I don't know where it is right now. But there was a large sign. It was laying on top of a log, right in front of the the tavern. It said Virgin Forest Tavern on it, and there was a, a gas pump in the front, in the front, and yeah. there was one pump, and he had city service gas, and I remember the sign. It was it needed oil, and it was the wind would blow and squeak like that, squeak, <laughs> squeak. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I remember that sign. It said city, it said city service on it. Mm -hmm. oh. That was. Uh, I think we have a, a picture of that. I think, I think yeah, somewhere we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mm -hmm. could have. Yeah. You know who I'm missing it? Uh, are your parents. Well, so Bob Lovelace is your grandpa. And then how many children did he and your grandma have? Well, she, they had two. They, well, they no, had no. four, actually. No, they had Lloyd. Well, yeah. Oh, first is Leona. She was first, the oldest. She was the oldest. Leona was the oldest. And then probably Lloyd? Well, yeah, it could have been Lloyd. I think so. And he died at the age of? Twelve. Twelve. Oh. He had appendicitis. He had appendicitis and, and he died. Oh. And he died. And, uh, and then after that would have been? Aunt, been mother and Your aunt, mother. And Dolly. And then Aunt Dolly. She Dolly Turpy. Dolly Turpy. Oh, okay. So, so what was your mother's first name? Ella. Ella. Yeah. Ella. And then Dolly. Mm -hmm. And Dolly was the youngest? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We used to visit with Aunt Dolly when I was in grade, well, high school actually. High school and grade school, because that was during World War II and Chirpy was in the Army. And we'd go, Mother says, well, Dolly's all alone. Let's go over there for the evening. And uh, I remember she smoked and I used to, but uh, she had a machine that made cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know if you ever, did you ever see that machine? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was very popular during, during World War II. But you, you put the tobacco in this little, you bring the arm over like that, and it was like like this picture here. 
you bring a little arm over and then there was a trough so we put the tobacco in there and you didn't want to get it too too much or otherwise when you roll it back it gets too tight so you can't draw through it so you have to put it in there just make it just right and then you put the paper on there and then you bring it over and it would roll and put the paper on and everything. Man, I, mean, I had a whole stack of little <laughs> cigarettes like that. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that Why don't you tell them about going to the, um, to the bar and you were talking to your grandpa about the little man. And oh, actually, on the, it, it isn't there today because Dawn moved it, the present owner. But on the, but this is on at the, the right hand yeah. side of that area, behind the bar, which protrudes out slightly, there's a log, the logs are in the, all the way up, but the third log or so from the top, he had a spigot come out there, and it was just an arm on it, just a regular spigot. And I see him go over there and take a mug and go over there and move that arm and he got, got beer. And I, I'd i seen it, you know, but I didn't think too much about it. And this one time, I, I was sitting on the end of the bar, and I see Grandpa going over there and getting that beer. So I asked him, I said, Grandpa, how do you get beer out of that log? I, I just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't visualize what, I was probably seven, six or seven years old, and he says, oh, I didn't, I didn't tell you, but he said, I got a little man inside. See, the cooler's right next to it. I got a little man inside, and then when I want beer, he, 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 he gives me the beer out of that. Well, of course, I go the bowl. Like you know. So every time he opened the door to, to go into the cooler to get something out, beer or whatever, I'd look in there and look, and I couldn't see anybody in there. So this went on for a while, and I just couldn't couldn't visualize what was going on. So I said, Grandpa, I don't see anybody in there. Oh, he said, you don't? He said, you didn't see that man in there? No, I said, I don't see anybody in there. Well, then he told me, oh, you got a keg in there, then I get it out of the keg. He <laughs> but he, I always remember that story, because something like that sticks in your mind. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was really, he was always a trickster telling stories. It sounds like he was, yeah. he was a world trickster. Did he have any, yeah. did he, 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 um, did he do certain activities with you? Did he take you hunting or teach, teach you trapping well, or actually, in the area? Actually, all I ever, I remember riding with him in a car just around the property or going over to the pavilion or, or around the resort. You know the cabins. I rode with them in the car. I did that, but uh, no, I never, never went any, you know, any distance with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of times, if we had been down around the resort or something, well, I could go out in a boat with them or something. And then he, he had boats under the pavilion that he rented, and I remember going under there. <laughs> Another place I thought I was going to make a camp or something. The boat was tipped over on the side, and it was dirt underneath there. And it was because the back end of the of the pavilion was built on stilts, like. And uh, so I thought, well, that's a nice place to have a little camp. And I was looking for a camp, so <laughs> I crawled under that boat. Well, my mother found me under there. And, Drug me out. <laughs> At least you knew where to look for him <laughs> under something. <laughs> I remember being under that boat, but uh, I was probably about six, seven years old when they did that. But uh, anyway, that's. Uh, but I did go with Grandpa on, on the boat a few times and around the resort. But uh, he didn't teach you any of his fishing no, skills. No, he no, not really. He. He did with the Indians when he first came. He uh, he stayed with the Indians at the Red Arrow camp, mm -hmm. and then they also had Indians at uh, uh, at the uh, uh, where the where the cranberry uh, bogs are now. 
that was there were some Indians there too, Chippewa Indians. Now that, as far as I can remember, what he was telling them about that was more or less a, just a small group of it that stayed there. But the main camp was down at uh, Red Arrow Camp. There was a, quite a colony of Indians mm -hmm. there. I Where guess. the camp is now? Yeah, Red Arrow mm -hmm. Camp. Yeah. On Trout Lake. On Trout right. Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you go by it every time you go to Monaco. I do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's horses in there now. You can mm -hmm. sometimes see the horses through the trees. When I when I first went to school, those trees were small. I mean, they were only about 10, 12 feet high. They're a lot taller than that today, but anyway, you can see the horses in there. I can go through and maybe explain some of these pictures. If yes. They're... First, I want to ask um, your your father. What is your father's name? Your mom and... Henry. It was Henry Cassine. Yeah. Okay. So, Ella and Henry. And where was Henry from? Actually, they came from... Um, Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen, Illinois, mm -hmm. outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Oh, so he came yeah. up here and they met? Then they moved to <laughs> Mon Mon near Mile City, Montana, because somebody said they could grow wheat, and they homesteaded a piece of ground out there. And they were out there for about six years. The first three years, they was great. They, grew a lot of wheat and made some money and in the last few years they had a drought and it didn't do very well so they moved to uh, what where the Cassine farm was on H near, by the river near oh. near H and K near H and K sure. oh wow. mm -hmm. and uh, where that straight stretch of K or of H is before you before you make your turn to to get to mm -hmm. K, that straight stretch that was a field, and the road went through the field. Oh! So there was farming on each side of that road. Huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah. And how did they meet? If do you if it's there ever a story? Oh, actually, how they met? Dad Dad came to the pavilion, the dance hall, and he met my mother. His mother she, was a hat check girl. She took care of the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she took care of the club. So she pretty much met mats. everybody that came in the door. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! And did you have a picture of them both in here, your mom and your dad? Uh, I don't know if we brought. I don't any. think I brought. I didn't that. notice earlier. Uh, I don't think so. We did. She was a hat check girl, yeah. and then they married and moved out to Montana. No, at, no. Or, no. He had been to Montana he before had been he to met Montana her. Montana first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then he came back. Yeah, and then he. And then they lived in Boulder. And uh, the piece of property that they actually built their house on belonged to Hank's sister. See, they previously oh, okay. on yeah. on Highway uh, Eight. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name was Marion Cassine, and she came. Uh, she was the oldest of all the siblings, and she came uh, from Montana. When they were out there, she didn't uh, she didn't want to live with the family, so she they got her apartment in Mile City. So she well, stayed. they were way out. Yeah, you know, they were, they were out in the country, you know, mm -hmm. oh. and uh, she didn't like that too well. Mm -hmm. So she said that she and she got a job in town. I don't know what she really what she did, but she got a, a job and she stayed by herself. And then she made her way back to Milwaukee and she met a man named Christensen, uh, Art Christensen, his name was. Oh. And they got together and they bought some property, which was two forties on on the. Uh, Manitouche River mm -hmm. near the entrance of or the, the uh, K and H. H and K. Mm -hmm. H and K uh, connection there. And there was also was a dam there at the time because that you'd put the logs, uh, you'd close that dam down, the water would back up from there into Boulder Lake. And then you'd put the logs in that, ahead of that, and then you'd uh, 
open the dam up and all those logs would go down the Manitowoc River. And then there was mills further down. All these lakes were like that. The whole mm -hmm. that's why we have the Manitowoc chain, because of the of their of the dam that was started to uh, back the water up for the logs. And they just sort of continued it, which I'm glad they mm -hmm. did because we wouldn't because it's have, so beautiful. Yeah, we wouldn't have to be able all to go on nice lake property. I believe it's like ten today. ten lakes on the Manitowoc chain, yeah. or ten or eleven. Something like oh, that. Oh, it depends yeah. on who's counting. Yeah. <laughs> But it's really oh. interesting why why it's like that, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but it was it all started because of the, of the logging. So she this actually their daughter bought the property yeah. with her husband, and then they no longer wanted it. So then. Well, they. I don't know if they gave the property to you. Well, actually, when they when grandma uh, and grandpa when my grandma and grandpa decided they wanted to to leave uh, Montana, they they already had a place uh, built there, so they moved in there, and uh, they stayed there. Who had it built? Uh, well, actually, it was the, the logging company had a place. Oh, okay. They built it for, for a fan. What they actually did was told people it was good for farming, and everybody would come up here and have, have a farm. That was their big... Uh, sales pitch, so to speak, but they really, it really wasn't that great for farming because mm -hmm. the, climate, sand. the mm -hmm. climate's too short, really, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, but, I mean, there's few crops you can grow, and my dad grew corn and strawberries and potatoes, and, potatoes, and mm -hmm. he usually started, grew t tomatoes by a little greenhouse that we had. I mean, he started that. I mean, there, there's things that you could grow, but it wasn't like a regular farming country where in the mm -hmm. southern part of the state. Where the dirt is really... Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and it's mostly sand and it's Black. not that green. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, the logging companies, they decided that 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 was their pitch to get people to take mm -hmm. the land because they didn't want to pay the tax. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Do you right? Yeah. Do you want water? Or not? Bob has sinuses that drip. That's how they got up to the that farm. He cleared the land and had a little farm there. And so that, that was where the Cassine family came from. Oh, okay, so that's where you grew up. It was on the farm. Mm, yes. Okay. Um, over there. And but that was the grandma and grandpa's farm. That was, that, that farm mm -hmm. was, my dad grew up there more or less. Yeah. And, uh, then, but the farm that Bob grew up on is right off Island Lake Road. Right off Island Lake Road. Two different farms. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. He actually bought that property from Grandpa. Grandpa was on, owned that land. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Do you want okay, water, so Bob? Two different. I have water here. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'll have some. So anyway, the okay. I don't want it to spill in there. Yeah, it was uh, interesting to see that. <laughs> this is a picture, the wedding picture. Oh. This is... 1904, it's got on the back. 1904 of Robert. Robert and, and, uh, and Hulda. And Hulda. That was Bob Loveless. Bob Loveless. He was a handsome man. Yes, he yeah, was. Yeah, and she's very pretty, too. 1904, Bob Loveless, Robert Loveless. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and this here is a picture of him when he had Hulda. his sawmill. 
That's what he looked like when he got a little older. Oh, look at that. You'll get a kick out of this one. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's a little boy. Does the same one look on the back of it? His mother wrote. In 1928, isn't it? No, I, mean, I can't see it. 38. 19. 38? 19, Bob Loveless at his sawmill, 1938. Uh-huh. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> is that, that precious? That is, oh my goodness. What happened to the um, How Willing Dog after? Well, actually, you... uh, Grandpa passed, well, before he passed away in 1944, he sold that to a man named Marty Kane. Mm. And he had it for years. He Marty for we still you call it, remember. We still call it Marty Kane's. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> oh. Still called Marty Kane's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't know really what happened to the bear. I never did hear about that. Oh, let's get a picture of the bear that was there. This here is a big, this is. Now this is when they're bigger. That's when, but then this here is when mother was by the bear when it was over by old 51. It's, so cute. it's hard to see it in there, okay. but they were, they're in there. And this is the bear and Ellen at 1924. Mm -hmm. Now that's mm -hmm. a postcard, and I think that was taken by Mr. Voss because he was a photographer. Yeah, somebody, somebody oh, that's right. Are. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And so who that, is the girl in the picture again? My mother. Ella's Your Ella. mother. Bob's mother, Ella. And this was at. Um, where the Hollow How Willing Dog is yeah. actually vir Virgin Forest Tap. Right, right. Okay, 1924. Yeah. And this and one is 1928. 1928. The bears are all grown up, and evidently the mother had been killed, and the yeah. cubs. No, they're both there. Oh. A, a, the, or, or the, and the two cubs, the, the, these the are the twins. two the twin are, cubs. The twins. That Bob had nursed to yeah. adulthood. Right. You know that actually, I I didn't actually go in the pen, but I was with Grandpa when he went in the pen. He'd open that gate up. It was you could see the wire fence that they had there. You know, he had two layers of that wire fence all the way around it, and uh, he'd open the, the gate and walk in. You know. And those bear was like a dog. They'd come up to him and they'd rub on his leg and he'd pat him on the head and everything. I mean, this is a cute I picture too. I seen him do it. I mean, and then he'd take Birds a. in Forest Park. Of course, he he had straw laying in there. Uh -huh. He'd take that straw and put it in the wheelbarrow and wheel it out. Then he put new straw down and for him and everything and. And he had a long a water hose. He'd water it, you know, wash it all because it had a concrete floor. Wash it all out and everything. But new, he did that probably oh once a week. My. Now this is part of the keep lumber it, yard. Keep it fairly decent because, you know, he said we've got to keep it nice because people come over here to feed the bear. You know, <laughs> I remember him saying that. And the. Um, <clears throat> And the bear seemed to be just fine with oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. This yeah. is the lumber yard, 1942. Okay, yeah. this is the lumber yard, Virgin Forest Park, Manitowish, Wisconsin. Now, that's also a postcard. So I'm yeah. all it's the postcards, I believe, were taken. All the postcards were, were, were made by Henry Voss. Yeah. He was a photographer. Mm -hmm. Okay. None of them were. And this is the loveless... Lumberyard, mm -hmm. and here's a 400-year-old white pine tree. Oh now my goodness! Is shown... this a folk postcard as well? Then yes, yeah. it looks like. And what is okay. it? 1928. Yeah. 1928, and okay, four white pine trees in Forest Park. <clears throat> Man, Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah, we'll, we'll look at any of these pictures. We'll okay. Okay. Where is um, Robert Loveless buried? In uh, the cemetery. Right in, in Woodruff. Woodruff? In Woodruff. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Yeah, the whole family is there. Mm -hmm. ah. Leona, Lloyd. And that must have been the only cemetery in yes. the area. Yes. Right. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> Hulda and Bob 
and Bob's mother and dad, Ella and Henry. They're mm -hmm. all right in a row. You know, I, I didn't want to bring this up, but this here is not, Grandpa didn't write this. What is it? It was, he probably narrated. No, he never even talked like this. <laughs> I mean, he actually had good vocabulary. Really? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> uh, this, these are all nice of the... Uh, I'll ask the authors. Because, uh, well, <laughs> don't, I, I don't want to say anything, but Grandpa didn't write this. I mean, he took all this information. It's I, good I information. Seen him one day, we, we need to and know I that. didn't know who I was talking to. I still don't know who it was, but anyway, he said, "Oh, I, I started that. I was going to make a, write a book, make a regular book, and that I started it." Oh, you don't know who it was? And uh, and I said at the time, because I read it, and. Uh, I said, well, Grandpa didn't talk like that. Well, he said, I made that up. Oh, it says retyped by Frederick Bartley. I know, but... Mm -hmm. but uh, we don't know who actually wrote it then. No, I don't really know who actually wrote yeah, it. Yeah, Bob came home and he said, my Grandpa put him like that. <laughs> didn't talk like that. No. <laughs> he talked just like you or I, you know what I mean? <laughs> And here's the inside of the virgin forest. Okay, here's Dance the hall. howling dog. Is right today. now today, which was first the virgin forest tavern. And here it is here. And Loveless Lane. <coughs> Can we okay. sometimes And then we'll look at yeah. those, yes. We'll look at those. Because I don't know what's on that. Yeah, really. we'll do that. And the Virgin Forest Park Pavilion. Now, um, that your that was your grandpa's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where was this located again? Well, if you go down the town line road towards uh -huh. the Cranberry Road, and before you get there, you, you see a road that says Levine Road. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> if you follow that Levine Road in a little ways, then it would branch off to the right, a little, not too far in. It would branch off to the right, and then there's a road that goes right into the, where the, where the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, oh, dance hall okay. was. But right now, I understand that. Tom Bear owns that property, so I don't know exactly what happened to, what, what okay. happened to that road because mm -hmm. it, it's changed, you know. So. Yeah, but it was a but, popular place. Oh, yeah. Oh, it really was. And then also, there was besides some, having uh, the, the dance hall, on Sundays he had uh, camping places also. Uh, but on Sundays, they would, your grandma would make sandwiches and they would. Have drinks <clears throat> and that he, type of thing. You know, yeah, he, let he, he wanted people to park. Uh, he never wanted to cut trees down to make a regular parking lot. So he let people park but around. But they came with the their trees. old campers and they, with, the, with the canvas tops. Um, he, had, he had tables set and, up out there and you could, you mm -hmm. know, it just made it like a picnic area. Wow. And then if it was too cool or didn't want to stay out there, you could go inside the pavilion and they had tables set up along the wall, and you could sit like booths. You could sit there and have your lunch and stuff. It really wasn't like a, a, a restaurant, but mm -hmm. it was for people to come. And then sometimes he had music in in the like a, they <clears throat> they had the roll type piano. They yeah. had rollers. They were about this long. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing them. They had holes in it, and that would turn around and play a tune on that. Rinky dink mm -hmm. piano. Mm -hmm. What nice memories. And what year was it destroyed by the snow? It came down in 1940. 40. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
That's yeah. too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you do have some memories of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember sitting on that bandstand when I was just a little He'd kid. He'd be there all the time because his mom was the hat check girl. So I, I had to, I had to <laughs> So stay, he went with her. <laughs> I had to stay with my mother, so I'd sat there, and then the, the band would start tuning up. She said, you can sit there. And <clears throat> while they're tuning up, but once they start to play, then you got to get out of there. She said. Okay. Bob said <laughs> they had a, a gr all girl band. Do you remember where they came from? They were <clears throat> those. I think the all girl band actually came from Milwaukee, I believe, because he got quite a few of the bands from. Bob said he was really intrigued with all women band. <laughs> well, I was just a little boy at the time. But he wanted to just sit there. <laughs> but it was something to see all those girls play all those different instruments, you know. Oh, my. you got to tell them about the Prohibition days, too. And then uh, a lot of times, in the, yeah, that was during Prohibition, and then uh, Grandpa had this uh, 28 Buick. <clears throat> or 29 Buick, I guess it was, and he had, uh, there's a picture of it there, and he he had the door panels so that you could take them off on the inside. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? stacked the bottles I think we did. inside of Is that right door. And uh, he used to go yeah. up by uh, up by Ironwood, in the southern, in the south side of Ironwood, there's a little moonshine place Distillery? up there. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever yeah. they called him. <laughs> yeah, and he he you get a a load of it, and then he then he'd serve it, but he only served it in cups. So if the revenue people came up, they'd always call ahead, said they're on their way. You know, somebody call ahead of time, so they knew he was they were coming. So he were everybody was drinking tea. <laughs> you served it in cups. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that that was quite a quite a thing in the early days. Bill Paquette had the uh, store in in Boulder, and he kept all of his moonshine in right in the by the back door. But he had uh, a flock of chickens. He kept, so he'd feed the chickens over the. He had a hole in the ground, and he like a little cellar, and he had the moonshine in there. And he, when he closed the door, they threw dirt over top of it, and he, he threw corn out there for the chickens. Oh, they scratch around, eat that, eat that. And you could walk right over it; you never know it was there. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. And, oh. What did you do when you were a little bit older? You went to grade school in Boulder Junction. Yes, I went to grade school in and Boulder Junction. As you were like a teenager, what did you? Well, and I worked with my dad and during World War II. We cut pulpwood. And what did your dad do for his living? Besides well, he the farm? we had the farm. We had uh, we had sheep first, and then. Uh, then he worked for the um, county. And yeah, he worked for the county. He, and he drove school bus. He drove school bus, and he, he worked mm -hmm. for the county. He had, uh, well, he worked for the county first when they first were married. And then uh, later on, he worked as a school bus driver for Boulder and took care of the, all the children on this end of the yeah. town. And then uh, later on, then we did a, when the war came in World War II, then we, there was a need for pulpwood, so we started cutting pulpwood, and we did that, and then uh, <coughs> 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 oh, you kept yourself very busy. I was real busy. Yeah. Cutting pulpwood during World War Here. II. That did you was that, yeah. a little bit more? Was that a hard time up here during the war, mm -hmm. the Depression? I think it was. My dad worked for the CCCs. Mm. Oh, he did mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. oh. And he also worked in the logging camps when he there was, was real young. Uh, at the time when. And then in the summertime, they'd ride the trains and go to California and pick grapes. Mm -hmm. hmm. So Grandma would say, 
goodbye for the summer. <laughs> and away they go. <laughs> yeah, he and his had to make money. His, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. his brothers would go. Yeah. Oh <clears throat> my. And did you end up in any war? Did you have to go away? No, because. Uh, yeah, you were in the Air Force. Well, I was. I enlisted in the Air Force mm -hmm. after I graduated from high school. Okay. 1948. And, uh, but that was after the war. Okay, so. right after I World was, War II. Well, the II. Korean War was going on. I was in the, in the Korean War. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. For the Korean, yeah. but you didn't leave the country? I was in Alaska during Alaska. the war. I was a crew chief. Bob said they split half of the, yeah, I, uh, I was the group the, that he was in, and part of them <clears> went <throat> to Korea, and the other part went to Alaska. Well, I was sent to, mm -hmm. I would, after basic training, I went to Alaska as a... Uh, in communications, because at that time they had teletype, and uh, but can you imagine to, teletype now for, <laughs> compared to what we have now? Yeah, oh they had to read that tape. <laughs> tick, 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 and they punch holes in that tape. And it's like Braille. They had to read all that tape. I and remember then, it well. <laughs> I used it for many years. Did you work? Did you work with him? Yes. Oh dear. That was oh. the hardest thing for me to learn to read that tape. But I, I finally got it. Cause he had all those holes in it. And then when you got back well, then, from Alaska, then you well, two actually, met I, and I was sent to Alaska for that, and then I transferred to uh, A and E Mechanic while I was up mm -hmm. there. You were in Alaska what twenty nine months, I think you said, yeah. right? And then that was before I met him. And it was the crew was... chief assigned to an aircraft. That was during the Korean War then. The plane I was assigned to uh, went to uh, Korea for uh, three times, for mm -hmm. a month at a time. And I asked the pilot that when he got back, it's one trip, I asked him, yeah, it, uh, <clears throat> uh, I asked him how he made out, everything was all right, because the plane looked all right. Oh, he said everything was fine. He said I picked up a little shrapnel, or ground flare, they called it. They were strafing a bridge, and uh, he, went, he, he went over the bridge and dropped his bounds, and, and, uh, and then he went, as he was pulling up, he got fire, some ground fire hit the right wing, poked a hole in the right wing, but it, went, it didn't do enough damage so he couldn't get back to base. And then all they did is they had rolls of tape about two, two or three feet in wide, and they took that tape, but it was a metal tape. It looked like uh, real thin aluminum. It would look like something like pie tin would be, or yeah. it's like this roasting <laughs> material that you buy, you know, mm -hmm. real thin. And they roll that out and put that tape over the hole, and he kept kept on flying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time that there was a, it, 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 but then later on, uh, before it came back to Anchorage, that's where it was out of Elmendorf. And when it came back to Elmendorf, it went to the uh, main repair in, in Japan. It, it, that was the base that they were actually assigned out of. And uh, when it went to that base and they repaired it, mm -hmm. so it was all right. Put a new piece of metal on it. And, riveted it back together wow. and so when I when I got it when I hit when it came to back to me over in, in, in at Elmendorf in the at Anchorage it was all right because I was assigned to Elmendorf Air Force Base right. <coughs> and uh, and also when the war started then the half of our squadron was sent to uh, Ladd Air Force Base and we were assigned to another Air Force uh, squadron up there, which was sort of neat because they asked for rations for the whole squadron of uh, 20, uh, no, 67 men, I think it is. And there was only half of us up there. So we got extra ice cream and all these goodies, you know. We had, we had more food because. You took care of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cook says, eat up the ice cream, boys. We get another load of it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 
Uh, oh, it was, it was my interesting. <laughs> At that time, I liked ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and then you came back. Then I, then I, uh, then I came back. And, back uh, to Boulder Junction mm-hmm. area. Yeah. And where did you two meet? My aunt went to school, Frances Ingstrom. Did you know any of the Ingstroms? In Hurley? No. She lived right here on H. No. No. Anyway, uh, she rode the same school bus yeah. that Bob yeah. did. Well, she was uh, a grade four, three grades ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, anyway, <clears throat> uh, we had come up on vacation because we lived in Flint, Michigan. My dad worked for Chevrolet Motor. And we came up during the summer for two weeks, and we'd stay with my Aunt Frances, and, who was my dad's sister. And so on a Saturday night, she said, um, we decided we're going to Plum Lake Nightclub in Saner. Did you ever go there? So anyway, uh, we were all excited about going to Plum Lake Nightclub. Never had been there. And of course, I was 16. And... Um, my aunt, we got in there and we were, I was dancing with my dad and with my cousin, whatever. And then Frances happened to notice Bob and she hadn't seen him because he'd been in the service for four years. And um, so she went to talk to him and then she brought him back over to our table and introduced us. And um, so then Bob asked me to dance. So we were pretty much been dancing all that time. <laughs> We're still dancing. <laughs> so actually, I knew him four years before we got married. Oh mm-hmm. my! Yeah. And your parents met at a dance. My parents didn't they meet at they, a dance? Yeah, they met actually at the at the Bob Lovelace's dance hall. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you yeah. two met. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the dance. Yeah. yeah. Really, that yeah. we had a lot of dancing going on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> our, our age group. Yes, and yeah. your um, your maiden name is Engstrom. Yes, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and uh, you're from originally from Michigan. Uh, or, no, no, nope. you're no, right, right was, from here. Right was, from here. She was born. Uh, but I was born in Ironwood. My mother came from okay. Ironwood. Okay. And she came up to work at the resorts, and my dad was playing in a band and he played with He actually played with my with mother his mother and dad, and dad because mother. Ella played the piano and his dad played the concertina. Like a small accordion, you know. Yeah. Not the great oh. big one. So they one. played at dances together. Mm-hmm. So oh, my wow. uh, dad knew them very well. Mm-hmm. But little did he know his daughter was gonna marry <laughs> her son. <laughs> oh. oh my and yeah. then you um, Made your home on... Then well, Bob came to Flint. Oh, I came, I yeah. came to Flint. He, he came and uh, my mother told him, she says, well, Bob, if you're looking for a job, she says, General Motors is doing a lot of hiring, which they were. Yeah. And so he came to Flint and he got a job at Buick. He worked at Buick. And he worked there a short time because um, you wanted to go home for Christmas the first year. Well, in the meantime, my <laughs> uncle... Richard Cassine, which is my uncle, which is my dad's brother, he and I <clears throat> went into business around the area here, and we had a septic tank business, and Lafernier was the only one in the area. That was before I met Bob. That was, that he uh, when I first this. got home from the Air Force. Mm-hmm. I did that, and then I thought, well, we uh, we bought a, a man up in Phelps, or Phillips, which is north of Eagle River, he was in business, and then he decided he wanted to retire. <coughs> so he he had had in the paper he wanted to sell his equipment, his truck, and everything. So Richard decided he, he knew I'd saved up a little bit of money when I was in there. His Force uncle decided he wanted to go in the business. He so thought Bob should buy me, the truck. <laughs> he said, "He said we're going to go out and eat tonight." And I, I was sort of wondered why. He said, "We're going to Little Bohemia and have some supper." So we went over there and. And his wife Joan was with, and so he proposed this Eric, this deal to me about the over thing over there. dinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I thought well, that was pretty unique to do that, but I said, <laughs> I said, uh, well, I don't know about that, Richard. He says, well, he says you're an old farm boy, and he said you were raised on a farm. 
<laughs> I said, well, I guess I, hey, yeah, that's true, but uh, this is a little different. No, no, he said, uh, it's not. He said, he's a little friendlier. <clears throat> Ninety dollars or or more. <coughs> Excuse me, with uh, just pumping out a septic t tank, and he says they're not even uncovering it. And I said, Gee, that's a lot it, of money. it looks like he really yeah. had looked into it. Mm -hmm. He looked oh. it up. So, so I said, uh, well, he sort of talked me into it. <laughs> so I, he and I were. So I went to the the uh, aqua printing and uh, I had some place cards made up and I went all over there. Well, around. first of all, you bought the truck. Yeah, first we went up and bought the truck and and all the equipment <laughs> from this man that wanted mm -hmm. to retire in the Phillips. And so then I, and then I we were in business just that quick. <laughs> so I got some place cards made up and some business cards and uh, I handed them out and <clears throat> and I had all kinds of work around. <coughs> Man, I tell you. I had all kinds of work around this area, but I never did go right into uh, Woodruff or Monaco area. I figured I'd, I didn't want to infringe on Lafreniere, so I just left that alone. But. I went as far as Lake Gogebic and Mercer and uh, wow. all around the area, different jobs. And, and how long did you do this? Two summers. And then mm -hmm. then I decided, well, because in those days there wasn't any snowmobiling or cross-country skiing or anything. And, you know, so it was really a summer job. Mm -hmm. Summer mm -hmm. job, really. Mm -hmm. So then I decided, well, I decided, well, I was staying in Flint, work, work at Buick, and then and I, uh, but when I did go back, I worked on construction for about three years and uh, served apprenticeship in carpentry. And then I yeah, got a job at AC Spark Plug and I went to work there and stayed there until I retired. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then he had to go to school. He was a tool maker. I went to school as a tool maker. And yeah. we had two children, <clears throat> so my next 18 question. months apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, they kept, he, some of the times he worked third shift, and they were knocking on the door all the time, the bedroom door. And I said, you can't do that, Dad's sleeping. They didn't understand that. <laughs> what are your children's names? Uh, our daughter's name is Renee. She is the oldest. She was born in 1960. And mm -hmm. our son's name is Jeffrey. He was born in 61. Jeffrey Robert. And he was born in 61. <coughs> yeah. So you're been mostly summer folks most of the time? Up here, well, up here. when well, we right snowmobiled, now. when we lived in Flint, we used to come up after my, my dad built the house in 1983 that we're in now on Jag Lake. Okay. And uh, we would come up and spend that time up here snowmobiling. Okay. So, and then our daughter ended up getting married to a boy from Fenton, which is like 10 miles from Flint, south of Flint. and. Uh, they, then, they, of course, they got married, and they were coming up with a snowmobiling also. And then they had a set of twin boys that are now 30. Yeah. And uh, they were younger at that time, and, of course, the boys loved it up here. And she would come up here every year. In the summer. In the summertime with those <clears throat> boys because she lived in 11 different places, and her husband worked for General Electric, and he was more gone than ever home. So she said the only stability that the twins had was living with Grandma and Grandpa, my mother and dad. And that was Sylvia and Stanley Ingstrom. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sylvia and Stanley yeah. Ingstrom. Because they were born in, in uh, 87. Right. And, uh, and now one of the twins has a little baby, him and his wife, and it is two months old. And it's really funny because this little baby looks just like the twin brother. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's Zachary and oh Tyler, and Tyler is the one that is the father, and he looks just like his twin brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's really fun. Renee said, you know what it is. You know how the blood is. You, you're twins. It's, you know. Stays. Stays. Right there. together, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. 
in um in closing, Bob, is there is there something a really stark memory that you have of your grandpa? Well, <clears throat> uh, that there was a well, about the bear, I guess, uh, different things. Um, mm-hmm. Or it's something that you may have learned from him that you've carried through your life and. Well, actually, work when, hard. I was, yeah. when I was uh, <laughs> That's in what grade he did. school in Boulder, I think I was in the seventh grade, and Mrs. Gamar was our teacher at the time, and uh, she told me, she said, because uh, I had talked about my grandpa having, you know, telling stories and different things. She said, well, if you can get your grandpa to come in school and sit down with the class and tell the stories about hunting and fishing and being with the Indians and when he first came up and so on. And she said, I'll give you an A in English. Can you and, believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so, not that, I, not that I wasn't getting an A in English anyway. <laughs> anyway, so I said, I'll talk to Grandpa. So... I told Grandpa, I said, you have to come to the Boulder School because they, they're, <clears throat> they're going to give me an A in English if you tell stories <laughs> about He says, well, Bobby, he always called me Bobby. Well, Bobby, he says, okay, he said, I'll come to school. So he made special effort. He came there. He got there, and, of course, the school bus came around 4 o'clock. I think we got out at 4, 4.30. And anyway, the... He got there around two o'clock and uh, he started telling stories about being with the Indians and they had given him a, a, a leather or buckskin coat or jacket and a pair of boots. They were, they were like uh, moccasin type boots. He had those. He said he was proud of those because he wore them a lot when he was, when he was, you know, with. Not that he wore it because the Indians had given them, but they were just good, and he used them. And uh, he taught the Indians how to fish, because they they were catching fish, but he had a way of making a special hook and so on. That he learned that <clears throat> being a fisherman like he was through the years, he taught the Indians, and they always thought he was really great. They, they thought he was like a, a white god or something. Mm-hmm. They, so, anyway, they, uh, he told that little story, and then he was telling different ones about being in the North Woods and so on, and, and then all at once the, the buses all came, and no kids that weren't even out there to get in the bus. I wonder what happened. They were all listening to Grandpa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Uh, anyway. Oh. It was really interesting, and I got my A in English. Anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, Bob and yeah. Darlene, thank you so much for being here today. You're more and than welcome. And talking to us and giving us a lot of excellent history for our historical mm-hmm. society. Wonderful. Thank you. You're that more was than very welcome. Interesting.